Hello, welcome. Quick video today. I already have the uh, clutch out of the turbo behind me here. And today I'm going to show you how to install new weights on it. APS has been helping me out a ton with this thing. When I first got this turbo, uh, the clutching was proper, but uh, there was there was places that uh, could be improved upon. So that's a Silbert turbo in that cat back there. Um, so anytime you're going up in horsepower, uh, you need to put in uh, different springs, different weights, different helixes. So let's check out the goodies that we have on the workbench behind me here. And uh, let's put some new weights in the turbo so we can go ripping right away. So this is the uh, kit that we are going to be putting in. It is an SSI kit, uh, adjustable weight kit for our turbo alpha. Uh, disregard all the other boxes and engine parts that are scattered around. Oh, except for this box. Let's open this box real quick. Sorry to get uh, to get sidetracked, but uh, this one's exciting. From the Alpine. Oh my gosh! Look at those freaking babies! Oh man, those look good! Damn, we might have to do an engine rebuild right away. So this clutch actually already has uh, an adjustable weight kit in it, but uh, I actually noticed that I'm gonna have to figure out which one it is. Uh, one of the weights was starting to wear instead of the roller, which isn't bad because uh, you know, we don't have to replace a whole clutch or a whole spider that way. But I'm gonna open this clutch up real quick um, and we will have a look at the issue I've had with these weights and we will put the new ones in and we will have another calibrated clutch here. Before you go ahead and take it apart, any clutch you ever take apart, make sure that uh, there's timing marks on it or put your own on. On these uh, team clutches, there's always an X right there. And then there's also, you can't see it, there's an X in here on the spider right where that dark spot is and where my finger is. But then you can also see these marks on it. Uh, always time your clutches, that's how you keep them in balance. So if you're not using a clutch compressor, make sure that you are maintaining pressure on this plate and then uh, just kind of back off all the screws evenly and just be careful because this thing could pop out of you. So just keep some pressure on it and make sure that uh, you're not backing this cover off sideways or anything like that. Now somebody's probably mad at me for not using a clutch compressor. Uh, I do have one. I don't know where it is. Uh, if I can find it, we'll put it back together with the clutch compressor, even though you can cheat it. If uh, you know what you're doing. If you have this clutch out already, and I've already done this, but uh, these clutches, um, they've been known to blow up. It seems like all the ones that uh, have blown up are the ones that are going to do it. I haven't heard like too many more of these cratering uh, as of late because Articat has changed the ADAPT clutch system. But this tutorial will be for anything from 2016 uh, up until when they put the ADAPT clutch in it. Let's see if I can get some light in there before I take them right out. Um, it's tough to see. Uh, you can just barely see with the light there. That uh, I've got some ridging going on on this weight right here, right in front of my finger. I think that's the worst one, maybe. Uh, a little more ridging on that one. Uh, and we've got some more ridges on that one, too. Um, but the rollers are all just fine, so that's good. That means that... Uh, that means that we still have a good uh, good primary clutch. Luckily on these clutches, there's no set screws, nothing like that. So the weights are actually really easy to change out. They do move around a little bit. Uh, there are thrust washers in there. And this is actually what causes a lot of the noise. This one might be a little excessive, how it's tipping back and forth like that. It shouldn't really move that much because these should not move. They shouldn't float around that much. Yeah, this one's pretty bad. So you can see right here where it's starting. This is, I, I caught this right at the end of the season last year. So um, it was like on the second last ride or something like that. So, um, boy, that seems excessive. Okay, so let's get this weight out. So the biggest thing you probably want to note here is uh, the pin direction. Cat has actually said on these clutches, it doesn't matter which way the pin goes, but uh, we're gonna do our due diligence and uh, make sure that uh, we just have everything going back in the way that it came out. I actually made a little bit of a custom socket, uh, my little quarter inch drive just to, just to get in there a little better. 
making sure not to lose any uh, thrust washers or special parts. There isn't a whole lot of small parts in here, so it's uh, not that big of a deal. Weight comes out. Don't forget your uh, little tiny thrust washers here. So let's uh, let's have a look see at this weight. So this is where I was uh, starting to see the issue, and I'm not sure if this is the worst one. It might be. But uh, we've got uh, we've got more issues here too, so you can see very visibly how oblong that uh, that weight is. So, man, for an aftermarket weight, this did not hold up well at all. So that pin will go in there, and uh, by the time we get to that spot there, yeah, this thing is just wobbling around so much. Yeah, that's that weight is just toast. Luckily. I was actually able to find the uh, the other aftermarket weight kit and uh, the stock weights too. So I'll be able to show you actually, this will be cool, I'll be able to show you three different types of weights, uh, stock and two different aftermarket options. So these little guys are the, uh, the set screws that I was uh, mentioning earlier. So they come in, uh, come in all sorts of, come in all sorts of sizes there. So what you would do is to adjust your weight is you'd actually take one of these set screws or whatever, sometimes you need more than one, and uh, you actually you screw them right into the weight, just like that. And then we have our uh, our brand new weight kit, so let's pop them open and let's see how it's different. That one's a little different. This one here is actually, we're gonna weigh this one a little bit differently. The, uh, the weights are actually this thing here, these things here in this tube. So the weights are little magnetic things. And then from there, we just uh, pop those in. But before I do that, let's check out, we got three different kinds of weights here and they're all different. So this is the stock weight. Doesn't have a lot of miles on it, it's a little icy. It was in my, uh, in a bin in my truck. But uh, that's stock weight, no adjustment on it, just part number. And then that part number will uh, correspond to a certain calibration. So there's a the stock weight, nothing Nothing really special going on there. Here's the weight we took out. It has a wider face on it, uh, a wider ramp rather, so that it's getting a little more contact with those rollers. So yeah, quite a, quite a bit wider on this one. And then our last one here is uh, even wider yet. So it's making a lot of contact with that roller, uh, which is what we want. On this one, because of four different uh, slots where you can put your weights, you can adjust actually the tip weight on this one. So what I'm gonna be putting in uh, for weights and my balancing may not be the same for you. Actually, it almost definitely will not be the same for you. So you can put in more weights up here to have a heavier tip, you can balance it. Um, I'm probably going to put the weights a little more heavy toward the uh, the end here uh, because it's a turbo so a little bit of a heavier weight on the tip will probably help me out a little bit and um, I can always adjust this if I need to so we got our kitchen scale here and the first thing I'm gonna do is weigh the weight that we took out so 75 grams I'm uh, because this has so much wear on it I'm actually gonna take out the other weights and uh, see what they're all uh, sitting at so I can maybe average them out and we can weigh it maybe a mm, touch on the high side but we don't want to get greedy with it either okay we got them all out and uh, and uh, now we can weigh them so we got a 76 a 76 this will be our 75 yeah, there it is. To at least 76, maybe even a hair more. So the weight by itself is 66 grams. So there we go, we're at our 76 just like that. What happens if we put one more in? 77? I feel good about that. And now you get to uh, pick how you balance them. And I'm gonna balance them, I think I'm gonna put them a little heavy. And this is something I, I will probably end up playing around with too. So for you, this is very likely going to be very different. Man, these are way easier to work with than those stupid set screws. So when you're installing these, make sure that every single one of your weights has the weight, the same amount of uh, set weights in it. 
and make sure that they are all in the same position for all your weights because you got to balance the clutch. Clutch has got to be balanced. You don't want to throw a clutch out of balance. So make sure that all these, like if you got one like this, they all got to be like this. They all got to look the exact same. So now that uh, we have our three calibrated weights, we can calibrate our clutch. So I've got all sorts of different calibration in my primary and secondary. So, um, you know, you, you probably have different colored springs than me. Sometimes it takes like a little bit of wiggling to just get that, uh, the shoulder of this pin through the weight. There we go, that's it. And then the uh, second thrush washer. Same with that one, you might have to wiggle it around a little bit just for the, uh, the shoulder of that bolt to climb up uh, into the proper place on the thrush washer. And then your weight is installed. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and just um, do that on all three sides and then we'll have a look. Wow, would you look at that? No more side to side play. Oh yeah, that's way better. That's how it should be. So there we go. After we verified all our weights are the same, uh, which we have done and we have made sure that all of our hardware all the way around is tight as well as those uh, pins are all facing the same direction uh which they are we've checked it for cracks the last thing i need to do on this thing is uh give it a clean check your timing marks make sure that everything is lined up the way it needs to be i'm gonna see if i can find my uh clutch compressor uh i don't usually use one of these when i'm working on primary clutches unless it has like a really really big spring in it um but I'll, I'll use it just to demonstrate i'm like the freaking master of clutching though you want to watch clutch videos we got clutch videos i'm gonna pop all your attachments off of it uh you may need some of these you may not depending on uh how tall the reach your clutch is these uh these ones are actually pretty tall clutch goes down Make sure you've located your timing marks on it. Make sure your spring is in. That's like uh, that's the whole point of needing the compressor. And uh, drive that down. Drive it down by hand. Don't use power tools on this one because we want to make sure as that's going down that the bushing in here is going to slip over this uh, shaft properly. So make sure as you get close to that bushing, just make sure it's going on straight. But uh, you can also lift up the bottom of this too. So you're going to get a bunch more reach. Basically, you just want to kind of go to, uh, like, even where the bolts can grab it, a lot of time is good. But uh, you're, you're just looking to take a little pressure off those bolts so that uh, you can do them up. I want to torque these up by hand. I'm basically just spinning these up. And then you can remove the nut and the cage. The cage is for, uh, this is mainly for secondaries. I'm just using it to give me a little more reach. And then you're done, you pull it off the holder and you have a calibrated clutch. I didn't make uh, I didn't make note of the ring gear on the back because uh, this may be a weight or it may be a, uh, a starter gear depending on what exactly the sled is. And if you got a new clutch, then you're gonna have to replace or uh, or put on a new ring gear or weight anyway. Hopefully this video helped you out if you're doing a little bit of calibrating at home today. And uh, we will see everybody in the next one. Subscribe, like, do all that fun stuff. It makes you feel good. Uh, Roku new logo. And see everybody really soon. I'm doing clutch work because I got to go out. Bye, everybody.